Coming up is a recap of the Loyola men's volleyball match versus Ohio State University. Plus, we have your highlights from last Wednesday's game, where the Ramblers faced the Fordham Rams for the first time in over a decade. We've also got a rundown on the hit Netflix show Full Swing and some fun sports facts for this day in history. I'm Caroline Lingen. And I'm William Bazone. We've got all this and so much more. Ramblers country, let's ride. RSL begins now. Hey folks and welcome back to Rambler Sports Locker. Another week down, another action-packed week of Rambler Sports. Isn't that right, Caroline? You're absolutely right, William. It's been a big week for the Blurs. All our teams are out there working hard. With the end of both men's and women's basketball seasons, the beginning of women's softball and men and women's golf, there is a lot going on up in Rogers Park as spring approaches. And don't forget about the men's volleyball team. They are undefeated in home and in conference play through its first 13 games. Let's turn it over to Samantha Martinez for an update for the Ramblers' hot start. The Loyola Ramblers men's volleyball team is on a roll this season. They have also gone undefeated to start conference play. Not only did the Ramblers solidify their first place standing in the Midwestern Intercollegiate Volleyball Association Conference after their win against Ohio State, but they are now ranked 7th in the NCAA and 10th by the American Volleyball Coaches Association. It's impossible to talk about the Ramblers' amazing season without highlighting a key player, Richard's sophomore outside hitter, Parker Van Buren. Van Buren scored a match high, 24 kills and 3 box solos in the match against Lewis, February 2nd. Next up, the Ramblers play against McKendree University, February 25th. For Rambler Sports Locker, I'm Samantha Martinez. Thanks, Samantha. It's great to see the men's volleyball team being quite the powerhouse. Switching over to world sports news now, the Canadian women's soccer team is playing under protest, fighting for equal pay and better resources ahead of the Women's World Cup this summer. Glenna Wethington has the story. Thanks, William. The Canadian women's national soccer team is battling its own federation for equal pay for equal play. Before the game against the United States at the She Believes Tournament on February 19th, the Canadian team wore purple shirts with the phrase, enough is enough, written on the front. The protest comes after the Canada Soccer announced significant budget cuts to the women's program, which has forced the team to cut staff and limit training camp days. According to a statement released by the players on Twitter last week, the team feels, quote, frustrated and once again, deeply disrespected, unquote. Their frustration mounts as the team prepares to compete in the FIFA World Cup this summer after winning gold in the 2021 Olympics. To show their support, the U.S. and England's women's teams wore purple armbands during their matches over the weekend as the Canadian team continues to demand equality. For Rambler Sports Locker, I'm Glenna Webbington. Thanks, Glenna, for showcasing these strong women. We hope to get to a point where one day equal pay shouldn't be something you have to fight for. Amen to that, Caroline. Last week, Elizabeth Winchester broke down some famous events on this day in sports history, and this week she's back with some brand new stories to tell. Elizabeth, what's the scoop? Welcome back to another edition of This Day in Sports History. There's a lot that's happened on this day, but here are your top three events. In 1932, Malcolm Campbell set the world record for the fastest land speed in Daytona 500. He managed to drive his famous blue bird car at a speed of 253.96 miles per hour. In 1977, Floyd Mayweather Jr. was born in Grand Rapids, Michigan. Mayweather was a five-time world champion with a record of 26 consecutive wins in world title fights. In 2007, Marion Jones married Obadell Thompson at the Union Hill African Methodist Episcopal Church in Wilson Mills, North Carolina. Jones is a former world champion track and field athlete, while Thompson is an Olympic bronze medalist. That's all for today's edition of This Day in Sports History. For Rambler Sports Locker, I'm Elizabeth Winchester. Thanks, Elizabeth. A happy birthday indeed to Floyd Mayweather, one of the most feared fighters of all time. Speaking of fight, sports documentaries like Hard Knocks, Last Chance You, and All or Nothing have captured the hearts of fans everywhere. These shows give them a look at what really goes on behind the scenes of professional sports. Recently, Netflix released a new show called Full Swing, focusing on the lives of PGA golfers like Rory McIlroy and Jordan Spieth. We actually have a former D1 golfer on our staff that'll be breaking it down. 
Thanks, William. For all of us golf fans out there, you know it, the world of golf is buzzing right now after Netflix released its new documentary, Full Swing. The docuseries follows the PGA Tour's biggest names on and off the course for the first time ever. Viewers are able to watch their favorite players' point of view in some of golf's biggest events, like the Masters, the U.S. Open, and we also get a glimpse in what life is like for players off of the course, and how they feel about golf's biggest controversy. Filming of the series had already begun prior to the announcement last spring of the new Saudi Arabian tour, Live. The series highlights the rivalry between the PGA and Live Tours and shows the divide between players interviewing current PGA players along with Dustin Johnson, Brooks Kepka, and Ian Poulter, who all left the PGA to side with Live. It should be interesting to watch how the series will affect this issue, but maybe it can be the start in unifying the golf world once again. For Rambler Sports Locker, I'm Chloe Morrissey. Thanks, Chloe. I don't know about you, William, but I definitely want to check it out. Well, Caroline, let's just say Netflix hit a hole in one with full swing. Now, golf might be a year-round sport, but the Atlantic 10 Men's Basketball Conference Tournament happens just once a year. With just one week to go in the regular season, all 15 teams are jockeying for their final positions. But with so many teams, who, or who are the favorites to go to March Madness? Back with everybody's favorite panel, here's the Ramble with Lucas Kim. Welcome back to The Ramble. I'm your host, Lucas Kim, here with Samantha Martinez and William Bazone. We are under a month away from the NCAA March Madness Tournament, and I know everyone is praying for another opportunity at a perfect bracket this year. But before the madness begins, individual conference basketball tournaments are stirring up. And for Loyola, they are getting ready for the Atlantic 10 Tournament from March 7th to the 12th in Brooklyn, New York. Fifteen teams are going at it in the tournament for a potential spot in the dance. So, with a little over a week to the A-10 tournament, my question for you guys is, who's winning the chip in the A-10? Samantha, let's go ahead and start with you. I predict that the Dayton Flyers are going to win the A-10 tournament for a couple reasons. Um, number one being is that, so the number one standing place right now is VCU, their first place in the A-10. But the Dayton Flyers beat them um, a while back. The first time, though, they lost by one point. The second time, they won by a four-point difference. Um, the Dayton Flyers have some key players, such as Tomani Kamara. He's from Belgium. Very key player. He starts almost every single game. He's also extremely tall. He's six foot nine. Um, the last game that the Dayton Flyers played, um, they doubled their percentages, or they almost doubled their percentages. They just have good numbers coming up. That's why I feel like they're going to win. Okay. William? Well, Sam, I think you bring up some great points about Dayton. They're a very good team, very talented. But the problem is, is they didn't have a great non-conference schedule. And look, you can blame that on injuries. They have Malachi Smith back. They're very healthy. But I think personally, VCU has the best chance of making this tournament. They are one of the best defensive teams in Division I. I believe they're sixth in defensive efficiency. And they are second in the conference in scoring defense to Dayton. Dayton's one of the best. But I think... As they always say, defense, defense wins championships, guys. Defense wins championships. And VCU has a shutdown unit, and I think that's really going to matter when it comes down to some of the better teams, not only in the conference championship, but when you get to the big dance as well. I think usually, you know, I know we're only talking about, like, the champion, but I think if it's a two-bid league, Dayton could get in if they just finish out strong because they had a nice, um, well, maybe not so nice, but I think they could get in or slew if they um, finish out pretty well. Right, and I know Dayton has like one really good guy. I mean, they have a guy that's averaging 17 and a half points. I think his name is uh, Duran Holmes. Yeah. Duran Holmes. Yep. He's. I mean, I went to go see him at uh, want to play his game, and you know, I was like, wow, he's got the KD complexion, the Kevin Durant complexion, and mm -hmm. you know, I feel like he could help out Dayton, but also VCU with their defense. I mean, they kind of you know defense, like you said, defenses win games, and so we'll see. And I think my follow up question for you guys is, you know. Loyola, not the team that they were uh, last year, but what do you think? How, they, how do you think they'll do in the tournament? Um, I think the, the games that I've gone to, the games that I've seen them play, is they're, they're catching up, but they're not quite there with the rest of the A-10 teams. Um, it feels like they're, they're losing by a couple points. They keep on tying continuously, but they're just not there yet. They're not as prepared. Um, I don't think they're going to do as good in the A-10 tournament. Uh, they might win one game if at best. All right, what do you think, William? I am with Sam here. I think we'll be lucky to win one game, 
But at the same time, if the standings were to end today, um, the number 10 team, because we would face, yeah, 10, 15, because we'd be last, um, we'd be playing St. Bonaventure, and we've already beaten them. So it's possible that we win a game, but I just think it's hard. It's a rebuilding year for us, and you know, I just don't think we're going to win a game. And it's okay. You know, it's, it's a new year. We have a lot of new guys, and they're all getting adjusted to the speed of the Atlantic 10. But give us a couple years to get some nice competition and pre preparation, I suppose, for these big games, and we might be making noise. Well, you know, I'm very rah-rah Loyola, so, you know, <laughs> I'm all for the team, baby. Um, well, I'm looking forward to watching all the teams fight for a spot in the dance. Thank you, Samantha and William, and let's toss it back to our anchors with some sports updates. Thanks, Lucas. It'll be interesting to see how the tournament plays out. This past Friday, the men's basketball team took on the Dayton Flyers on their first nationally televised basketball game in almost five years. Here's executive producer Gabby Luma with the coverage. Though the Loyola men's basketball team is coming off its first ever road win against an Atlantic 10 team, the momentum wasn't enough to take down the Dayton University Flyers, losing 65-49. to Graduate center Bryce Golden began scoring for the Ramblers with this three-point shot. But shortly after, Dayton followed up with this dunk of a fast break by Tumani Camera. which set the tone for the Flyers' offense. The Ramblers came close to catching up with Dayton, catching glimpses of a full-strength offense like this time from junior forward Philip Austin. But Dayton's power forwards, Deron Holmes, uh, the second, and Mike Sharov jams uh, shut down any hope for Loyola to overcome. Ultimately, Dayton's offensive power was too much for Loyola, ending with a score of 65-49. to 49. I told them, everybody in the locker room after the game, that I got their back, I love them, I believe and trust them. And that's why I'm frustrated right now, is because there wasn't belief in each other, and there wasn't belief or trust in what the coach's game plan was tonight. Next up, the Ramblers face St. Louis University February 25th at 5 p.m. For Rambler Sports Locker, I'm executive producer Gabby Luma. Thank you, Gabby. In addition to the loss against Dayton, the Ramblers lost another close one against the Fordham Rams on Wednesday night, 71-69. to It was their second-to-last home game of the season, and the Ramblers started out strong with this dunk by redshirt freshman Ben Schweiger. However, the Rams fought back and ended the half with a one-point lead over the Ramblers. Here's what some of the fans had to say about the game during halftime. Fordham's uh, kind of behind Lola right now, which is pretty exciting. Uh, good game here at home. Uh, very excited. The teams were neck and neck until the end, but the Rams ultimately secured their win over the Ramblers with a score of 71-69. to The Loyola men's volleyball team took on the Ohio State University February 18th, winning in a three-set sweep. Amelia Villahauer has a story. The Loyola men's volleyball team is on fire. Tonight's game versus Ohio State University ended in a total victory score of 3-0. This is the team's 11th win this season, and here are the highlights. For the most part of set one, the two teams remained neck and neck until the Ramblers fired up and redshirt sophomore outside hitter Parker Van Buren brought the heat with his three kills near the end of the set, and they pulled ahead to a score of 25-20. The final point scored by Loyola was challenged by Ohio State, but in the end was rewarded to the Ramblers and they secured their first win for the night. During set two, both the fans and the team members continued to bring the energy. Even when the players weren't playing, they still showed their support from the side of the court with a combination of dance moves and cheers. Yeah, me and Bryce, uh, you know, we're in our dorms sometimes, you know, coming up with some new material. We gotta make it fun for us, but also the fans, and we also gotta feed the guys energy. This set was an absolute nail biter with both teams fighting for that win. Ramblers started with a five point lead and a score of one to six until Ohio State fought to get to a tie of seven to seven. After that was a battle and tensions rose as the teams kept tying up and things came to a head at the 19 to 19 score. The fight paid off when Ramblers took the 25 to 21 win. 
I mean, you got to go in expecting you're going to win, but you also know with a good team like Ohio State that they're going to try to hit you right back, so you just stay on them all night. The team showed their strength and determination in the final set and showed everyone that despite a slow start, they were here to win. We just stuck to our game plan and really grinded it out. Set three started again with a strong five-point lead for the Ramblers with four kills from the team. Near the end of the match, players redshirt junior outside hitter Colton Brooks and redshirt senior outside hitter Cole Schlothauer continued to rack up points with kills and blocks. This led to the arena being filled with excitement coming from the fans in the stands. Uh, I think we have a great crowd. We had so many people here today and having them cheer every point just helps so much for us and it's really great for us. The game ended with a victory of 25 to 18, the final kill issued by redshirt sophomore setter Dan Magnum. This game has secured the team's streak of remaining undefeated for their home games. The men's volleyball team will be taking on the McKendry Bearcats this Saturday on February 25th in Gentile Arena. For Rambler Sports Locker, I'm Amelia Vilhauer. The Loyola women's softball team traveled to Austin to play in the Texas Classic this past weekend. The Ramblers lost four out of the five games they played, two by just one run with their lone win coming against the Incarnate Word Cardinals, 5-0. Their record drops to 3-7 and seven on the season, but they look to bounce back at the Racer Classic down at Murray State University this upcoming weekend. The men's and women's track team will also be traveling to Kingston, Rhode Island this Saturday, February 25th. They participate in the Atlantic 10 Indoor Conference Championships and look to continue its success from the title winning season for cross country. For all you Rambler fans across the country, the esteemed men's basketball chaplain and Loyola legend sister Jean Dolores Schmidt has partnered with sports writer Seth Davis to write her very own memoir, Wake Up With Purpose, What I've Learned in My First Hundred Years. The book's expected to hit shelves on Tuesday, February 28th. I, for one, can't wait to read what Sister Jean has to say about life. That wraps up this episode of Rambler Sports Locker. To stay up to date on all things Rambler Sports, be sure to follow us on Twitter, Instagram, and TikTok at Loyola RSL, and subscribe to our YouTube channel. On behalf of our entire crew, I'm Caroline Lingen. And I'm William Bazone. We'll see you all here next week for a brand new show. But before you go, don't forget to turn off the lights. <laughs>